Hey guys, it's Max. If you've been following me for a little bit, you'll know that recently I've been testing different computers as well as graphics cards and mainly looking at the video editing aspect of them. Now the last video I did was comparing my $5,000 Mac Pro to a specced out iMac. It was almost specced out and uh, you know the iMac has a gorgeous 5K display, has all the computer hardware, it comes with a keyboard and a mouse and it was almost half the price of the Mac Pro. Now what was really interesting is that in uh, Final Cut it actually performed better than the Mac Pro and in Premiere Pro it was almost as good and you get a lot more for your money. Now from those results, I basically uh, could understand that the reason it performed better is because of the new graphics card that's in it. Even though it has less raw power overall, it's just a newer design and it performs better in OpenCL, which is what you use for video editing and Final Cut. So very interesting testing. Recently, Apple announced their new 2015 version of their MacBook Pro that I have right here. And just like I thought, they actually have an AMD graphics card in it. When in the past versions, like the 2014 one you see right here, they had a NVIDIA graphics card. Now, since I saw that, I was really excited to be able to test it out and see how it performed if we see similar results like we did with the iMac. Now, if you guys want to see uh, the full results, full testing comparison with uh, my previous computer tests that include the Mac Pro, the iMac, and the Hackintosh that I built, you guys can check a link in the video description. That'll take you to my website and then you can see all those results. But in this video, I'll be uh, basically comparing and focusing just on these MacBooks. Now you may be thinking, why don't you just buy the newest, greatest, latest version? And isn't that the only one that's available? Well, if you go to the Apple store or like a Best Buy, you're going to see only the 2015 models. They're not going to be selling the older ones. But if you go to Apple's website, they actually sell refurbished models for about two to three years after it's been replaced. So you can get it at a discounted rate. And actually on B&H's website, they sell a brand new 2014 version like this one here for less than what Apple sells refurbished models for. So it's a really good deal. And of of course a lot of people will buy a used one. Now so is it really worth buying a used one or a refurbished or a new used older model like this 2014 from B&H? Is it worth the money? So if you guys want to get a, a shortcut answer without watching the video, I have two links in the video description. The first two links, one's labeled Final Cut and one is labeled Premiere Pro. So choose whichever software you use and that's my suggestion if you want to just see the cheat shortcut way of my answer. Now overall the laptops are almost identical but there's a few improvements on the new version. The 2015 one along with that new AMD graphics, it gains an hour of battery life as well as support for 5K displays where the 14 version only supports 4K displays. Now along with that we have a faster SSD in here that's twice as fast but in real life usage and testing I didn't really notice any uh, noticeable kind of boot up speeds or app loading speeds anything like that. Now the last thing I want to mention is the new trackpad. So this new trackpad actually does not click like this older one does when you press down on it. It uses a magnet to simulate a click, makes it, making it kind of feel like there is a click there when there isn't. Now that helps have it, have it like a more uniform feel. So no matter where you click on the trackpad, it feels the same. It makes it actually quieter, which I like. And it also gives you more functions like a force touch. So you can press and hold and you'll get a secondary click and it can kind of sense the pressure you put. So I think that's a huge win after using the new 2015 version. It's really kind of hard to go back to that one. Even though Apple is known to have like the best laptop uh, trackpads, this one is just a much improvement over the older model. Getting into the test, the raw power of these laptops is nearly identical. They have the same CPUs and the GPUs, even though they're different, as far as raw power, they're very close. And you could tell that if you're looking at the Cinebench and the Unigen Heaven results. Now, even though raw power is very similar, it really matters how your editing program uses that power. Both AMD and NVIDIA cards support OpenCL acceleration, but NVIDIA cards only support CUDA. And because that's because NVIDIA owns CUDA and they have it locked down to their card. Interestingly enough, MacBook Pros don't come with the CUDA driver installed. So if you just load up Premiere Pro, it's only going to show the OpenCL option. So if you want to use CUDA, you have to go to NVIDIA's website and download the latest drivers. Now in my test results, you guys are going to see uh, for Final Cut, there's only going to be two results. And for Premiere Pro, since on the older version we can use CUDA, you'll actually see three results. So keep in mind, uh, make sure you look at that. Looking at the test results, a clean 1080p 5 minute timeline export is almost identical between all the systems. 
That's because without any effects, the GPU doesn't get used at all, only the CPU. One thing to notice is how much faster Final Cut renders compared to the Premiere Pro. It's about five times as fast. This is gonna be a common difference between all the tests, so make sure you keep that in mind. Adding two LUTs as well as some film grain to the footage, our render times increase. Using OpenCL acceleration, both laptops perform about the same in Premiere Pro, but when we switch to 2014 MacBook, we can use CUDA acceleration thanks to the NVIDIA GPU. The render is about 20% quicker. Taking a look at Final Cut, once again you notice how much faster it is overall, and here we see about a 20% improvement with the latest MacBook. Moving over to 4K, we see similar results. A clean 5 minute 4K timeline exports at similar times using Premiere Pro regardless which laptop and render method you use. With Final Cut, we have a much faster export with the new MacBook taking a slight edge. Adding two LUTs and film grain, the new Mac Pro has a slight edge over the old one in Premiere Pro using OpenCL. Switching to 2014 to CUDA gives it an edge over the new MacBook, once again about a 20% improvement. Looking at Final Cut, the new MacBook is nearly 15% faster. The next test is the toughest on the system. Now this is the only test where my $5,000 Mac Pro actually pulled ahead of the iMac in Final Cut testing. It's four 4K files put into a single 4K project and each 4K clip has two LUTs and film grain applied and the timeline is only 15 seconds. That's a lot of processing for a computer to do. With Premiere Pro using OpenCL, the results are similar with the 2015 slightly faster. Switching to the 2014 to CUDA gives us just over 10% gain over the new MacBook. With Final Cut, once again we see a large speed boost over Premiere Pro, but the results are interesting this time. Instead of being about 20% faster, the new Mac Pro is about 75% faster than the 2014 model. With Final Cut, the heavier the workflow, the more it makes sense to get the 2015 model with the new AMD graphics. Now with Premiere Pro, on the other hand, it makes sense to get the 2014 model and make sure you just use CUDA to get your gains or else the 2015 model is still faster. The last test is something that I do really often because most of my lenses don't have image stabilization. It's taking a 15 second 4K clip and applying stabilization to it. In Premiere Pro, the results are about equal with the 2014 model using CUDA slightly ahead. Looking at Final Cut, the new Mac Pro is about 20 times faster using Final Cut compared to Premiere Pro and twice as fast compared to the 2014 model when both use Final Cut. So why is Final Cut so much faster? Well, basically in my testing, I could tell that Final Cut just uses your system resources a lot better. If you're wondering about temps, both laptops perform nearly identical. I ran a test where I converted H.265 footage to ProRes LT, and that basically uses 100% of your CPU. Now, both laptops did get fairly hot, but they didn't get hot enough to thermal throttle. So both of them still ran at a turbo boost of 3.1 gigahertz, and they sat right around 95 to 98 degrees, which is definitely hot. Now, when you're video editing, keep in mind it's not gonna be getting that hot because your CPU will not be pinned at 100% all the time. So in conclusion, I wanna say that if you wanna use one of these two machines, definitely take a good look at Final Cut if you haven't yet because there's some major speed boosts when you're using Apple's hardware with Apple's software. It works really well together. Now, if you're stuck on Premiere Pro and you don't wanna pay more for the extra features that the new model comes with, uh, I think you're definitely just fine and maybe even more beneficial to go with the older model, but definitely make sure to download those CUDA drivers. For either laptop, I would strongly suggest taking a look at B&H. They have the 2014 model brand new for even less than you can get it for at Apple and about the same price as buying a used one locally when I tested on Craigslist seeing what people are selling their used MacBooks for. So you also don't have to pay taxes as long as you're outside of New York and they have free one to three day shipping depending how far you are. On this newer 2015 model, right now it's about $150 less than buying it from Apple and then you, there's a good chance you won't have to pay taxes either. So I would definitely recommend taking a look at B&H. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, you guys can give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below. And as well, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. And don't forget, if you guys wanna see the full graphs and charts comparing these two laptops to the other computers that I mentioned, check out the link in the video description for my website. Now, if you guys wanna follow me on Twitter, it's Max Camera. 
And then if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, you guys can find me there as well. And I also have a Twitter feed, Max Camera Deals, and that's where I check daily on all the different sites, all the actually legitimate good deals, and I share them with you guys so you guys don't have to look at different sales, emails, stuff like that. And then if you're looking through your Twitter feed, you see something you're interested in that you need to buy, you can get it for a better deal. If not, you can keep going. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.